Welcome back, Wildcat fans, to a very special playoff edition of the Deer Park Coaches Show. I'm Jake Snyder. Joined always uh, with me is Tucker, Coach Tucker Berger. All right, Tuck, today we are going to look back at our senior night 20-14 to 14 loss against Madeira. Um, we're going to look through some of the, like, just kind of overall arching, overarching season uh, individual performances. And then, most importantly, we're going to look ahead to our first-round playoff win, or first-round playoff matchup on the road, hopefully a win, uh, against Cincinnati Country Day. So uh, let's get right into it. Sounds like a plan. All right. So first things first, uh, let's kind of close the book on this uh, last game against Madeira. 20-14 to 14 loss. Um, you guys are right in it all the way up until the end of the game. You have the ball uh, with the uh, you know on the last possession with a chance to go down and and win it. It doesn't go your way. Yeah. Um, a pretty tough offensive game for you guys. Um, Madeira did a lot of things really well defensively to shut you down a little bit. Um, but Tink finishes with 95 passing yards. He rushes for a touchdown. Uh, Morgan has 70 receiving yards. Uh, you get a huge defensive play and a big game in general from EJ Gore, 13 tackles, and then obviously the pick six. Um, and Kevin Guzman has 12 tackles on defense as well. Just kind of take me through that one. Um, obviously not the result you wanted, but some good things there too. Yeah, and I mean, for anyone that was there, I think that's probably one of the worst first halves we've played. Yeah. I mean, we just seemed really sluggish coming out. Um, I mean, we just couldn't get anything moving on offense, and you know, luckily our defense hung in there and had some big plays. Um, and I mean that pick six by EJ really kept us kept us kind of floating around, um, but I mean we came out the second half we made some plays we went yep. down the field scored, um, you know so we were back and forth and I mean it's just one where you know you really wish you get that first half back because you know then it might be a whole different game for us but you know you can't so we just kind of got to live with it and and learn from that and move on. Yeah, for sure. And you know at the end of the day. Uh, one of your goals is is make the playoffs. You're there. Everything is yeah. is right there in front of you. You get a chance to go out and win a game. But um, let's jump and look at some film real quick. We're not going to look at a lot. I want to talk more overall about the season and and also get into uh, CCD as well. But I do want to look at a couple plays because I think some stuff stuck out for me in this game. Awesome. Um, and we're going to start really at the beginning of the game. Um, really, kind of your best, one of your better offensive plays maybe your best offensive play in the first half. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really early in the game on your first possession. Uh, Alford, this is just a really nice 15-yard run by Isaiah. Really Actually, well blocked. I think the first play of the game we yeah. ran. <laughs> yeah, first offensive play of the game. You're right, it is. Um, really kind of as sluggish as that first half went, you jumped out of the gates really quick with this yeah. play right here. Um, thought kind of you were off and running at this point. Yeah, and I mean, Isaiah just has a really good feel. Mm. Um for running the triple now, you know, unfortunately he got banged up a little bit later, so it kind of slowed him down a little bit. But, you know, he's he's ready to go this week. Um, we knew the safeties were going to crash down on our motions, and you can see that guy to the to the bottom of the mm -hmm. screen come screaming down. Um, and, I mean, we just do a good job of getting up to that second level, kind of forcing the backers down, and Isaiah hits the gap, and you know, he's quick enough to get through there. And, I mean, there's part of me I thought he was going to break it at first. <laughs> but, you know, 17 plays on the first play of the game, you know, that's good. Yeah, for sure. Um, and just kind of talking about that, about that crashing of the safeties, just to kind of look at the game as a, as a whole, they did that the entire game and yeah. really sh were able to shut down um, your guys getting on to the edges, out to the edges um, for sure. So um, you did end up having a punt on that drive, uh, three plays, three and out after that first down. Um, so you get on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, they kind of march down the field on you. Again, they're, they're using a lot of those just like little outside dump passes, yeah. um, swing passes, tunnel screens, that kind of thing. Um, and this first interception, this is going to be Riley McHugh that picks this one off. And for Riley here, this was a good adjustment, I thought. They, they were beating you on those tunnel screens. They were beating you on those swing passes um, to be able to – kind of step in, make an adjustment, and go get a pick here. A lot of crucial factors in this play. Walk me through it. Yeah, and, you know, we were – I mean, we, they were killing us on those. Mm -hmm. I mean, and we made it. We made a few adjustments on defense, and it really helped. I mean, we kind of shut it down. They went away from it. Yeah. Um, and started running the ball a little bit more in the second half. But Riley just does a good job of feeling out the screen, and he kind of gets in that window. So, I mean, even if this is a low throw, he makes the play. Yep. Um, but he sees the ball is high, and he goes up and makes an athletic play and, and gets us the ball back and, you know, gets a little return yard – yardage with it yeah um i mean he almost had one i think a few plays before on a on a screen and go and he slipped um going for it but i mean that's just a kid who's who's made big plays for us on defense you for know sure. game after game and you know just having the ability to feel that and i mean we went through screen periods all week just to be ready for that 
um, you know, it just shows that, I mean, it just shows, you know, he works in practice. He's, he's attentive and he's, he's really taking what he's learning and putting into the game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, second interception comes a drive later, and this is the big one here. Oh, yeah. This is uh, the most important important play of the, the first half for you all. Um, again, they're still going to keep looking. Uh, I think this is the play where they kind of got away from those uh, those outside yeah. short passes. Um, this one is really, really uh, dictated by the pressure that you get on the quarterback here. Yeah, and I mean, I think we had pretty good pressure all night from our guys up front. And EJ just does a really good job of, I mean, just same as McHugh. He kind of kind of feels it out. We get pressure to the quarterback. We knew he was going to let it just kind of float if he got hit. And he, and he just kind of throws it up there. EJ does a good job of of attacking it. And I think, yeah, he high points it. And then once he once he gets it, I mean, EJ is going to outrun yeah, for sure. 75 85% of the guys in the league. So, I mean, that's just one of our captains stepping up, making a huge play for us. Um and really, that was kind of the spark we needed to get into the game. Yeah, I agree. And it just felt up to that point. We were super flat. and Kind of woke everybody up a even little bit. right after that, I think the next defensive play is, you know, we kick around a fumble mm-hmm. about 12 yards yep. in the backfield. I mean, so, I mean, there's just a few plays here and there that you wish you could have made. But, I mean, you know, one of our guys stepping up and making a play like this really sets everything off. For sure. And I can't tell the number there, but whoever jumped that route also causes that interception because it looks like they're going to go out to the numbers right there with that uh, – that outside wide receiver and somebody jumps that route and uh, and quarterback has to go away from that throw. So um, really nice defensive uh, defensive effort there from everybody. So, all right, we jump ahead to the second half here. Um, you Like you mentioned, your offense does kind of get clicking a little bit here. Um, and so we're going to start with uh, a 35-yard reception from Morgan Brown here. Um, this play has just kind of been a go-to for you guys oh, yeah. all year long. Um, seems to work really well. It's something you like and something that you, kind of a well that you can go to when you need big yardage and need a big play. Yeah. Um, I mean, Tink does a good job of really f- throwing the outs and he yep. feels and he feels it um, pretty well when he throws it. So him and Morgan have really good timing on that. I think Morgan does a good job of running it. Um, you know, we knew that they were going to start dipping down our play action a lot once we kind of got down the field, once we came out of halftime because we did have some success running the ball in that second half. Um, especially those guys on the outside, when they saw it, we knew they were going to crash down. And Morgan does a good job of staying inside of him um, and just keeping that track vertical. And then he breaks it out. And I mean, once he breaks it out, there's no one out there. Yep. Um, Tink does a good job of floating it over that guy. And then, you know, Morgan just does what Morgan does and he gets those yards after the catch. Yeah, that's a nice throw from Tink on that play right there. Um, he, he, there is a defender between him and Morgan. Uh, and if you you throw that ball low, there's a lot a lot of green grass right there for the defender. Pretty good throw from from your quarterback there. Great play by Morgan. Gets upfield, like you said, does what he does. Turns a a, a gain into something a lot bigger yeah, than. And I mean, this was one of those drives where we really needed to go. I yep. mean, we, I think this is the drive we go down and score. So it was, I mean, a few of those plays just kind of really set you off and. Yeah, it's actually the next drive that you're going to go down and score. Yeah, because what's going to set that up is actually right here, this play. Um, This one is going to be uh, Alford, who's going to make a huge play in the backfield here. That you know what I said that was in the first or in the third quarter. That wasn't in the third quarter. That was still in the first half here because um, this play is actually really really big right here. Um, This is late in the first half, and uh, Alford is going to make a big tackle in the backfield on what they were trying to do here was a, a trick play. Yeah. It's first and long. Uh, you really need to not let them score here. At this point, it's 7-6. to six, uh, or Excuse me, 12-7. to 12-7 to seven at this point. So they're leading in this game. You do not want them to get in the end zone right here. Alfred sniffs this one out quickly and uh, and makes a huge play. Yeah, right and this here. is one of those points where, you know, they score going in the half. You know, you never know how the guys are going to respond. Um, you know, that deep motion kind of sets up that double pass, and we're screaming, and we actually cover it pretty well on the backside. Um, and yes. Alfred knew, you know, when he saw the bubbles, he was going to be the guy to go. Um, and he just does a really good job of tracking it and, and making the kid just kind of hold the ball long enough. And we knew they were out of timeout. So that just really helped because it made that clock run. Yeah, I mean, that basically completes yeah. the half right there. That ends the half. Like you said, uh, really nice job by your defensive backs to hold position here, cover everything up, leave him really nowhere to go with this ball. Um, you know, this is a time where you do not want to sell out yeah. uh, and and lose contain, lose lose deep coverage. 
Uh, nice job by your defenders yeah. there, and I, too. And we went into an odd front at some point in this game, and we played actually – uh, primarily throughout, and C.J. Warner, um, number three, yeah, he actually did a really good job. I mean, he's a defensive end, but you know he's converted from linebacker, mm. so he has a little bit of that linebacker athleticism in him. So I mean, he's our guy that drops, and I mean, he did a good job all night getting his hands on passes and dropping under things and coming off the edge for us. Now we're going to go ahead and jump ahead to the touchdown drive, um, and we're going to look at the touchdown here from Sellers. Uh, he's going to take this one seven yards for the touchdown. This was a nice drive. There weren't a ton of plays to pick out of it uh, to look at yeah. because you really just kind of controlled the possession, took it right down the field uh, kind of methodically, which was really nice. You like to see those sustained drives uh, and and tink, cut, tuck, uh, tops it off with the touchdown run here. Yeah, and I mean, he made a nice throw to Kevin on the play before yeah. um, going across the middle. So we kind of we kind of felt like we had that energy in our offense. Um, and, you know, he did a good job of reading it. The guy stepped down on the back, and, you know, he knows now. We've talked about it. If, if he puts makes a move and gets vertical, he's keeping it. Um, and, I mean, he does a good job of reading that block. He sees Kevin's got that guy going out, so he just puts his foot in the ground and gets vertical. Well, and this might be a play if you're further back that he pitches that out to the outside. Yeah. But here you only need seven yards. He's in, you know, this play was really well blocked. He's in the end zone it's a really good as he comes through it. By, yeah, it really Henry was. And, and Michael. Um, and they get a lot of movement there. And, and just the push, I mean, that puts him four yards forward. Yeah. There's no reason to pitch that. Really good read from Tink. Touchdown and gives you the lead at the time. Yeah. You're going to go up in this 14-12 uh, uh, to 12 at that point. Uh, you know, feeling really good. You know, unfortunately, they were able to just kind of run right down and score on you yeah. guys to retake the lead. Um it's going to lead into this play right here. Uh, this is your biggest offensive play of the game. Morgan is just so fast on this play. Um, he hits the hole well. This is, this is your best offensive play of the game. Unfortunately, you guys weren't able to cap it off um, for a whole litany of reasons that we don't even need to get into. But uh, but really nice, really nice just pitch here from Tank. Good read. Great on the outside. Morgan goes. Oh, and I mean that guy from Madeira does a good job. I mean, if he doesn't, he really did. If he probably doesn't get hands on Morgan as as quick as he does, I mean Morgan's running by him. Mm -hmm. um, I mean Morgan does a good job of just extending that play by you know carrying the guy with him for a while. Um, but I mean Tink does a good job at the start of it by you know he attacks the pitch guy, gets it out quick enough so that guy can't get back into the play. And I mean we have good blocks on that on that edge that kind of spring Morgan through that alley. Um, you know, it would have been nice if he would have broke broke that last tackle and got in. But, I mean, that just set us up in a good position to score. Um, you know, unfortunately we didn't. But, you know, it's just it's just those plays right there that at least put you in the opportunity and put you in the position to yep. to kind of have some success. Yep. Okay, we're going to put this Madeira game behind us. And uh, we're going to look into uh, kind of the whole year and just very quickly kind of touching on some of your offensive leaders on this squad. Um, Tink Sellers, 940 passing yards, nine touchdowns on the season. Those are both highs for a Deer Park player for a long, long time. It's been a long time since somebody's almost thrown for 1,000 yards, has a chance to, uh, you know, this weekend. Nine touchdowns, nine passing touchdowns. I don't know that anybody's had nine passing touchdowns in a long time. Um, I Tink's just a sophomore. Yeah, He's going to keep getting better and better. Uh, just talk to me in general about what your quarterback's meant to you this year. I mean, in the passing game, he just – I think he's really bought into just kind of those mechanics and that footwork and the timing. I mean, he, he takes every throw in practice really serious. I mean, takes all the routes serious. Um, and, I mean, it's just – he's been working on it so long. I mean, we started back even before Tony came in to help with the offense this year. I mean, we were rep we were repping this in, in March. Yep. So, I mean, he's just really bought into extending that passing game, and I think it's something he feels he does really well on top of the running ability. Um, and, I mean, for him being so young, I think you just can see how far this is going to go, especially, you know, with him staying back there and him going to continue the work to put in. Um, I mean, I really hope he goes out there and gets at least 60 passing yards on Friday <laughs> just, just to hit that 1,000 yep. mark. Um but I also know with him, you know, he's he wants to do whatever we need to do to win. Yep. So I think that's the biggest thing is he's just really kind of bought into the offense, and I think I mean, he really epitomizes that dual threat. Yeah, for sure. Uh, 581 rushing yards yeah. on this season as well. He's responsible for 15 of your touchdowns. I mean, I think it's fair to say that the offense goes with your quarterback. Yeah. It's not a, you know, surprise for your quarterback to be the, the leader of your offense. Um but for a program that really has hung its hat on rushing the ball for so long and still does, obviously, to an extent, 
Um, you've put a lot on this kid uh, this year, maybe more than any quarterback you know in the last ten oh, yeah. has had in uh, you know for Deer Park. And so, obviously, you know, excited to see where he heads over the next couple of years. Speaking of where they're headed, your rushing leader on the year, Morgan Brown, four hundred eighty-two yards. Um, obviously, less yards than Sellers, but uh, but your leading running back. Uh, 40 carries that's a 12.1 yard average per carry crazy. um seven touchdowns as well I, I think the sky is the absolute limit yeah. for morgan brown yeah and i mean i think it's just his work ethic and his determination are only going to just continue him to to improve i mean he's not one guy that's going to let all of this just go to his head and yeah. just accept where he's at i mean he's going to he's going to stay in the weight room He's going to stay playing basketball. He's going to stay t- uh, running track. He's going to do the things that are con- going to continue to make him successful. Um, I mean, that's just one of the things you need out of young guys, but also out of leaders. And I think he's really developed in that, you know, just looking at from day one when we started to now. I mean, he's one of the guys that everyone's looking at, like, you know, to rally around. Yeah. And, I mean, I just can't say enough about him. I mean, he's all phases of the game. He's, he's making things happen. I mean, rushing, receiving. I mean, he's, he's a heck of a defensive player. I mean, yeah. He's just overall something that you just you just really like to see. And, I mean, like I've said before, it's crazy to think he's just a freshman. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, he, he just goes out there and he works every single day and he, and he does what he needs to do just to, to better himself and better the team. For sure. A couple of seniors I want to talk about real quick. Uh, Isaiah Alford uh, and Riley McHugh. Really, and I want, I'll want i throw uh, Kevin Guzman in mm-hmm. there as well. Those three guys are guys that have kind of been behind people um, yeah. for a lot of their career, or in Riley's case, not not on the team. Um, but those are three guys that your offense doesn't look like it looks this year if you don't have those three players. All for 285 yards rushing and a touchdown. Riley has 11 receptions for 201 yards. Really takes the top off of the defense yeah. for you. He scores three touchdowns. Guzman's made some awesome plays in the last two weeks really he finishes with 13 catches 201 yards and that touchdown we saw last week um those three guys are three very important pieces to your offense as you look towards this tournament run right now yeah and i mean i i really don't think you can undervalue how much their experience is i mean i know isaiah had to sit behind jay sean for a while but i mean he's played in games and yep. he's he has the experience, and I mean, same with Kevin. I mean, Kevin's been a four-year starter on yeah. defense, but he's been a two- or three-year starter on offense. And, I mean, same with Riley. I mean, last year he played some here and there in the second half of the season. But I just think as a whole, those are guys that have really kind of taken on that that senior leadership role. And, I mean, they don't complain. And I, I know at times I feel bad that they don't get the ball, yeah. you know, as much as they probably should. But, I mean, they don't they don't complain about it. They just go out there, do their job, and, and just want the best for the team. And, I mean, those are guys that you need just to be successful. And I mean, there's, they're guys that have really drug us through. And I mean, all three of those guys have gotten us out of some really bad spots throughout yeah. the year, um, offense and defensively. For so, sure. I mean, those are just guys that really embody what we're trying to push as a program and kind of that culture we're trying to instill. I mean, I'm, I'm just really lucky to have three seniors like that on the offensive side. For sure. Speaking of defensive side of the ball, uh, Isaiah Alford, who we're just talking about, uh, leads your team with 75 tackles. Uh, he really was the heart and soul of your defense this yeah. year, too. Every time a big play was needed, it seemed like him or a couple other guys that we'll talk about here um, were the ones that were able to come up with it. But Alford really felt like kind of he held that defense down uh, throughout the entire season. Yeah, and I mean, that's just – you look out there on defense, and I mean, he's not the biggest guy, but I mean, he plays so he plays with so much heart, and he plays so fast, and he's physical. Yep. I mean, that's just what you need out of your linebackers, and I mean, it feels like every single week now we're talking about him making a play on defense mm, for sure. Um, and I mean, that's just you know, I, I was looking at the defensive stats from last year to this year, and I mean, I, we've given up almost a hundred less points, and mm. I mean, I think about fifty less points in the league. So it's it's guys like that have really bought into the new defense we're trying to run and who really just show up every day and work their butt off just to be the best they can be. I mean, I can't say enough about Isaiah and just, you know, not even how much he's grown as a football player, but just as a kid in general, yep. you know, throughout the academic part of it and the field part. I mean, Isaiah is just awesome. 
I, I think your defensive line's worth talking about, too. I've got C.J. Okay. Warner listed here with four sacks, but there's a whole bunch of guys that we you could, could mention. You could list them um, all. You could, yeah, you really could pick them all out. Um, your defensive line really – I felt like they played with their hair on fire a lot of time yeah. this year, and, and that's what you want out of those guys. You need your linebackers to be steady, and you need those defensive front guys to yeah. just be going after the quarterback, um, and all those guys did a really nice job this year. Um, but C.J. leads you with, uh, with four sacks. Yeah, and I mean, like I said, you know, C.J. came in – this year as a linebacker and you know yep. we sat around and we were kind of looking at our, our depth chart and we're like man we don't really have anyone you know kind of to fill those voids and I was like man why don't we just throw CJ out there and mm-hmm. I mean you know I think he was a little hesitant a little resistant to it but I mean he's just one of those I mean he's just one of those other guys that doesn't complain he just does what he does and yep. I mean we found some ways to kind of get him to stay still use that athleticism um but I mean I think he's done a good job of leaning on guys like Lucas like Joe like Justin like Andre and just kind of really seeing what they've done and kind of just listening to them when they try to give them some pointers here and there. And I mean, my dad's just been a huge help coming over and just really working with those D linemen every day. Cause I mean, I mean, we're just not, we just look so much better up yeah. front than we have in the past. And, and I think he's been a huge part of it. And I mean, these kids are really buying into it right now. So, I mean, I, I can't thank those guys enough for what they're doing for me. For sure. All right. Time to jump in week 11. It is yeah. now officially win or go home. Yep. Uh, you know, we've been talking about the importance of these games for uh, the last really four weeks, but the reality is, is uh, you know, if you're down on the scoreboard when the clock hits zero in this one, your season's over. Um, Cincinnati Country Day comes in 9-1. and one. They're a good football team. Uh, we've seen them two years ago. We played them in this exact same game, yep. uh, went to their place, won that game. Um, but this time, this is a good program. This is a good team that you're looking at. Tell me what uh, CCD presents to you that, uh, you know, you've been preparing for over this last week. You know, they're a really good team. I mean, they're really well coached. They're really disciplined. They're going to do – they're going to be right where they're supposed to be. And we know that. I mean, their offense is really electric. I mean, they got a really good quarterback, really good running back. they got a group of receivers who can go. And, I mean, on defense, they're they're really sound. They tackle well. Um, So, I mean, that's – we just – we got to show up and we got to play. I mean, we got to – we can't – make mistakes we can't press too much we just gotta gotta be calm cool and just play our game um and you know i think we present a pretty good challenge for them i mean i think we do some things that they haven't seen in terms of the option and all that which i mean that's that's always tough to prepare for within a week but i mean also on on their end i mean they got a quarterback who's thrown for over 2,000 yards yeah they got they got some really good receivers so i mean they got they got some guys that i think will give us a little bit of trouble too um, so I think it's going to be a good game and, you know, I'm just hoping we get, we get enough stops and we, and we can score enough to, to stay in there with them. For sure. All right, coach. Um, as this could be our final episode, I yeah. hope uh, I said it last week. I'll say it again this week. I hope to see you next week. Um, but, uh, as it could be our final episode, I know, you know, for you, it's your first year, uh, as the head coach sitting in that chair across from me, I, I know you can't get there alone. Yeah. So I know you got some guys that you want to shout out, some guys you want to talk about, people you want to talk about that uh, that brought you along this year and and uh, kind of put you in the spot you're in. Yeah, I'm gonna pull my phone out. I got, yeah. I got, I got a little. Make bit sure of we a, don't miss any. Got a little bit of a long list here. <laughs> uh, well, first off, thank you. I mean, this is an awesome experience, and and I love doing this every week with you. Same thing. Um, so I really appreciate that, and and all you've kind of done for the team throughout. I mean, you know, the media day and all that. The kids really loved that, and that was awesome. Um, but first, I mean, all the fans and all the parents that have supported us throughout, I really appreciate all you guys have done. I mean, you don't know how much that, that support really feeds through the team and really, really boosts those kids on game day. I mean, it feels like we've had some bigger crowds this year. Yep. And I just really appreciate that because it kind of keeps them going. Um, two parents in particular that I really want to thank. Um, Leah Smith, Riley McHugh's mom, she mm. comes out and takes pictures for us. Every single Every game. single day. I mean, and, and she doesn't charge for mm-hmm. them. And, you know, it's just something she loves doing, so we really appreciate her. And then also our team mom, Denise Moore. Um, I mean, she's made my life so easy. <laughs> I mean, she's taken care of all the all the pregame meals, breakfasts bef- be, uh, before film, and she put on a really nice senior banquet for us too last week. So, I mean, Denise, I really appreciate all you've done for me. Um, you know, my family too, just all the support. I mean, especially my mom. I mean, she at one point when we started lifting – she, her and my dad were pumping out 80 to 100 peanut butter and jellies for the kids. And, I mean, she just does so much for me, and she helps me so much and wants to support. I mean, I just can't thank her enough. Mom, I love you. Thank you for everything. Um, little cats, I mean, 
they support us too. Yeah. I mean, Jenea, Marshall, you know, they show up at everything. They're really supportive. I know the sixth grade team has a big game this Saturday um, at Norwood. So go out there and beat Bethel Tate. Um, boosters, thank you all. I mean, I know it's a lot with all your hectic schedules throughout the fall. I know you guys got kids doing everything, but, you know, opening concessions for us and all you guys do Friday, Saturday, junior high games. I really appreciate all of that. Um, the band and the cheerleaders, I mean, I think we have those two groups are probably two of the better ones in the city. Without a doubt. Um, and, I mean, our band just had a big competition this past weekend. They did really well, and I know our cheerleaders have their competition coming up. So I really appreciate all that support. I mean, Suds, Vetter, Boward, Troxel, Aaron, I really appreciate you guys showing up. I mean, I know at times I'm crazy because I make us leave so early, but I really appreciate that. Um, all the transportation people, CJ, Judy, Phil, Joanne, thanks. I mean, we, we couldn't do it without you guys getting us where we're going and all that. Um, uh, Deer Park Sports Network, Becca, and the rest of the Wolf Clan, I mean, you guys just do so much to kind of extend in that brand for us. And, and I mean, I got people in New York and Pittsburgh watching us, so yeah. – it's, it's just nice to see my friends when they send me some Snapchats and stuff and they're watching the game. And I'm like, man, that's awesome. So, you know, Becca and company, thank you guys. I'm going to get into some, uh, some uh, more individual shout outs now. So first, you know, all of our custodial staff, Tia, Paul, George, Tony, Tim, Keith, Carrie, Dave. I mean, you guys do so much for me. And I ask a lot out of you guys and I know at times our locker room's gross and you guys just really do the most to really help us out. And then, you know, Tia, Chris comes and he's our ball boy and they've done change for us and they've done water for us. So, I mean, they just make it really easy on me on game days because it's just some other stuff that I can just put on the back burner because I know they got it covered. Um, Tracy Day, if you guys don't know Tracy, she's one of our cafeteria workers. She actually would let me come in there and take chocolate milks during the winter um, for the boys when we were lifting just to get them a little bit more protein after our lifts. So, Tracy, I really appreciate that. Um, I think this might be one of the most underrated people that people don't know, but Judy, um, Judy Lawley. No doubt. Um, I mean, she does so much, not just for football, mm. but for all the fall sports and, and the winter sports. I mean, she's up there, you know, as much as I am maybe. <laughs> and I mean, she's doing so much up there with, you know, the refs and transporting people. And I mean, Judy just does so much. So thank you, Judy. Um, Nate Wolf, he's our equipment guy. And I mean, he kind of came on this year and he also – does a lot with our special teams guys. So you'll see him out there snapping the ball before and all that. And Nate's just a really positive guy that's really jumped on this year and just really helped us. Um, so I appreciate that. And then my buddy, Seth, he's the, if you guys don't know Seth, he's the curly haired guy that jumps around on the sideline and runs up and down. He holds our iPad. I mean, he does it for free. And Seth just, he's just one guy who's really bought in to helping me build a culture and just wants to be there. So, I mean, I really appreciate that. Ryan Hubbard, Dave Citron, they're two guys up in the box for me that helped me on offense. And I mean, those are two guys that just want to be around the game and want to help me. So I appreciate those two. Uh, Randy Bucker, Russ Henry, they film for us. I mean, I know our film setup's not the best, but you know, they push through it and do the best they can. And then Randy also doubles as kind of our apparel guy. So mm -hmm. thanks Randy. I mean, I text him every week looking for some <laughs> shirts. So check us out on Friday. I'll have a Randy, Randy Bucker exclusive. Um, Karen Henry, uh, Miss Casey, both of them, I mean, have helped me throughout our summer with our summer camp. And, you know, Casey works in the building. So she's looking at attendance for me always and just kind of the coaches' certificates, making sure everything on that clerical end's great. And, I mean, Karen just brings a positive war around the program and really helps the kids and help me. And, I mean, she used to film for us. And, I mean, I just can't thank her enough for all she's done. Um, and then we got a bunch of student workers that have helped. So, I mean, Camille Lewis, Abby Petty John, Megan Brown, Riley Carr, my girl Madari. I mean, all of them, they never complain. They're always giving their best effort. They're always there. They just make it run smooth. And, I mean, Alex has a student trainer, Denia, from UC, and she shows up every day. And it's just really – they just all really bring in – feed in that positive atmosphere. So I can't thank those girls enough. Um, and then, I mean, I think Alex is probably the biggest person I got to thank. Yep. I mean, she does so much more than her job, and she might be probably the only person that's up there more than I am. I mean, she deals with all the fall sports and – on top of dealing with all our athletes and making sure they're all good to go, you know, and getting them back in. But I mean, she's also that maternal figure at times that kind of talk them off the ledge when all of us are mean to them. And I mean, I think a lot of the guys just kind of just seek that, that her out to kind of clear their minds. So, I mean, Alex, I can't thank you enough for all you do for us. Um, I mean, the rest of my coaching staff, I mean, they've made this awesome. I mean, I could, I could have a group in there that I don't like and that just kind of poke the bear and point fingers at each other. But I mean, 
they take it and run with it, everything I've asked them to do. And I mean, I know over the summer I was a terror at times because I was trying to figure it out. And I mean, they just kind of took it and ran with it. And I mean, finish it off. I mean, I got to thank the guys. I mean, without the team, I mean, I, I can't sit here and, and do it. So, yeah. I mean, they, you know, at times might push back a little bit, but, but they always get it done. And I really appreciate all they've done and all the effort they put in to get us to this point to week 11. Um, and I mean, everybody that I just named has contributed to the success of the program. And I mean, I know four and six might not be where he wanted to be, but I think success in my mind really extends past that record. Yep. And I think if you look at it as a whole, I think we've came so far from where we started and I just, I'm just really happy and I'm really excited for this Friday. So, I mean, if nobody has anything going on 7 PM CCD, 15 minutes away, please come on out and support Wear your white, get loud. Let's go beat CCD. Let's get a win. Let's go Wildcats. I'm going to let you close that out. Then we will leave it that that is going to do it for this special playoff edition of the Deer Park Coaches Show. As always, he is Tucker Berger. I'm Jake Snyder. Catch us every Thursday night of the season on YouTube. Uh, you can listen to us on Spotify, Apple, iHeartRadio. Wear your white on Friday night. Like he said, CCD. Uh, that's going to do it for this yeah. week 11 edition of the Deer Park Coaches Show. We will see you all on Friday night.